The following program discusses sensitive issues. Parents are cautioned that some material may be too candid for younger children. Hi, I'm Mike Carducci with Coming Out Ministries, your host today on Pure Choices. With me, my guest is Lance Williams. How are you doing? Hey, Lance, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Excellent. Uh, Lance and I have known each other since 2005, and yet this is actually just our second time of, of being in each other's company. So, Lance, I want to thank you for coming all the way from Georgia uh, to speak with us today. Um, Lance, the reason why you're here is uh, Coming Out Ministries. We, we have a ministry about coming out of homosexuality. And, and I remember that um, somebody had asked me if they could give you my phone number, and we'd never met, and we started uh, talking on the phone back in 2005. Um, and so what I want to do is basically give our listeners, um, you know, your testimony and, and to be able to walk through uh, some of the, uh, the journey that God has brought you on. Okay. All right, so let's start mm -hmm. basically at the beginning, if you would. Give me a little bit of history. Well, um, I was born into a home that was broken. Um, my mom and my dad were uh, uh, drinkers. Uh -huh. And I grew up a sensitive, um, introverted child. Mm. And it seemed to me that my father uh, was very uh, distant. And I just, I, for some reason, I feared him a whole lot. And um, I, I, I just didn't want anything to do with him. And mm. it started at a very early age. I don't know why. That's, that's all I remember is that I just, for some reason, I, didn't like it. I did not like to be around him. Uh, were you an only child, Lance? No, I am, I am the youngest of three. Youngest of three. Okay, so, you know, there's something, uh, you know, that I want to touch on, the fact that you're a twin, right? Yes, that's okay. correct. So you have an interesting story about uh, when your mother was giving birth about that. Could you tell us a little bit about that? And actually, if you would, start with in vitro, like while your mother was pregnant? Yes, uh, my mom, she, while she was pregnant, uh, she was telling me that while she was pregnant, my father, she, he wasn't hardly around. Mm -hmm. and Where was your dad? Um, he would be out drinking and, okay. and doing something. When he, when he would get paid, he just would do something with the money and she didn't even know what he was doing. Okay. And uh, what was happening was she would be depressed a lot and hungry. Mm. And um, when, by the time she gave birth to me, by her being in that state, it seemed like I w was born with a lot of depression and uh -huh. sensitivity. Okay, so who was born first, you or your brother? Uh, my brother was born first, and they, did, they didn't know that I was in my mother's womb. So your brother is born, and they're thinking that they're done, and this right. is the baby. Right, correct. So how did they find you? I, d I don't know how they found I was in there. They just knew I was in there. I was scrunched up way in the back. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. Um, so what was your relationship like with your brother? I, I really didn't have any relationship really with either of my family because I was just so introverted and so much into myself, my own world, mm -hmm. that I just didn't really associate too much with anybody. Why do you think that you were so isolated? I, you know, here you have a, a mother and father, and I, I, I guess I can understand that if they're, if they're alcoholics, and, and I can see where you would uh, be, uh, you know, to yourself, but, but you had an older brother and then a twin brother. And you'd think that, you know, most twin brothers are, are very tight, you know? I think there was just a lot of drama going on in the home, uh -huh. and uh, I, I didn't know how to handle it. I was just so fearful. I was just a very fearful, sensitive child, and my brothers, it's like they would uh, just argue and stuff a lot, and mm -hmm. I would just observe what they were doing, but for some reason, I was just introspective. Did they pick on you? No, not Your really. Brothers? No, wow. No, no, I mean, they really no. just left you alone. They just, yeah. Interesting. What was that song that you were telling me about earlier? How does that go? This house is full of people, but nobody's home. Wow, wow, so that really describes your childhood. Yeah, exactly. You know, a lot of detached kind of uh, things between your mother and your father and even your brother. So imagine to have a house full of people and yet to still feel um, absolutely alone. Yes, I, I, I just didn't understand uh, my world. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't understand people around me. It's just, I don't know how to explain it, Mike. But it's like I was just in a totally different environment, totally different wow. world. Just, just like it's, I was by myself or something, mm -hmm. you know. 
Okay, so Lance, um, I, I know that you know we're going to go right to uh, the first sexual experience that you had because it seems like it was relatively early in your childhood. Can you tell me about that? Yes, uh, we were always told not to go down the street. My grandmother lived across the street, but she never really watched us. Uh huh. Um, so where was your mom and dad while your grandmother was watching you? Well, when we were at when I was a very young age, when when we were a very young age, my father left us, mm -hmm. and my mom she worked sixteen hours a day, so there was no one really to take care of us. So we were just by ourselves. Uh huh. And so what had happened was they, they she would tell us just to stay home, don't go anywhere or anything. But mm. um, this need for just hunger, I had this hunger. I didn't know what it was, but I had this need to just. Uh, have some type of male intimacy and affection, you know, just mm -hmm. wanting to know that I'm loved, you know. Mm -hmm. And I ended up going down the street, and there was this uh, older uh, boy mm -hmm. down the street that I went to school with, but he, he was... Uh, yeah, how uh, old were you at this time? I, I probably would say about uh, 10. 10 years about old. About 10 okay. years old, yeah. All right. And I went to just get, just have some fellowship, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't even think about you know, at this time, I didn't even think about sex at all. I just, just right. wanted some, I had this need for just fellowship, you know, sure. friendship yeah. and everything, you know. And while I was with him, all of a sudden, he just uh, uncovered himself. And I was so shocked about it that I just, I just ran out mm -hmm. of, of the house. Mm -hmm. And so what happened? At, was that the only time that, that you had been sexually abused? That was the first time. Okay. Okay. Uh, the second time was when... Um, well, what happened was uh, because he'd done that, um, I was curious. I think right. most, most people get curious, especially sure. if they hadn't had any intimacy or love from anyone. So I ended up going back. Mm -hmm. And so then he started touching me, and um, he told me to follow what he was doing with him. And so it led to one thing to another, and, and right. so I started getting pulled into this thing that I didn't understand. Right, and, and I think for a 10-year-old child, you know, there was already a deficit in your home. And we know that according to Proverbs 27, verse 7, it talks about, you know, the man who just ate a big meal, mm -hmm. you know, dessert is undesirable. But to somebody who's starving, Lance, even something bitter can taste sweet. And so you identified that, that you needed and you were um, searching for some male attention. Yes. You weren't getting mm -hmm. it from your father. He'd abandoned you. Your brothers ostracized you. Mother wasn't at home. And so here you were living in a house full of people and yet isolated and alone. I can understand it. We know that it doesn't make it right, but it certainly makes it understandable that this boy gave you attention, and even though it was the wrong attention, bad attention is still better than no attention at all. Correct. All right. That's right. So mm -hmm. I can still see how you were the victim in all of this, even though as, you know, at a very young age you may have taken responsibility for, you know, I shouldn't have done that, why I can't believe that I'm going back again. So uh, I really hope that that helps to understand you're not responsible for being molested, that was what was done to you, um, even though you had a curiosity about it. So um, when did you move in with your father? Well, uh, right when, and, and praise the Lord, right when this started to become a habit going over there to see this person, uh -huh. uh, our father came and got us. He wanted uh -huh. us, he wanted us. Um, and, uh, but the problem was, as we were driving to his house, so this uh, is the day you leave your mom, you're in the car, yes. and mm -hmm. you're on your way to your dad's house, and you're with his girlfriend yeah. and her son. Her son, that's right. Okay. And he was saying something like, you know, uh, no uh, son of mine's gonna be a, a sissy. Who was he talking about? He was talking about me. And was that a parent in the car? Uh, uh, everybody knew who Everybody, he... Everybody was in the car, you know, mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately, uh, somebody who was hearing this very intentionally was, um, the son of this girl, this woman that he was going with. Right. Was he living with her? Yes. Okay. Yes. Were your parents Christian at all? No. Okay. No, all right. Because no. uh, I think that's important to know also. So what happened when you got home? So at this time, you know, my father's girlfriend's son, um, he started to seduce me. He's How probably, old was probably he? About, I think about 11. Probably about okay. 11. Okay. Yeah. All right. And you're 10. But yes. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> and so uh, how did that what did that leave you with, Lance? You know, here you've been molested by a child in the neighborhood, and now all of a sudden, you know, this kid picks up on you, more rejection from your father and exposure, you know, to your brothers and then your dad's girlfriend's, you know, son who's living with you, and now he's abusing you. Um, where did that leave you? It just, uh, it caused me to get on this uh, uh, pattern of um, start homosexual desires. Okay. You know? yeah. Does that include mm -hmm. masturbation? 
Yes. It, yes. Okay. So yes. that's when it started uh -huh. for you. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So so let's take it now. You're about 15 years old, and your dad starts this thing where he's taking you to bars, right? Yes. So can yeah. you develop that a little bit for me? Because that's really difficult for me to understand. Yeah. He he would take me and my brothers to this bar, uh -huh. and um, during there, the day, at night, during the evening. Okay. And uh, one evening when we went there, I met this uh, guy who was a DJ, uh -huh. and we became very very close friends. And for some reason, I knew that what I was going through inside of me was wrong. I knew it was wrong. But you weren't a Christian, you said. No. But there no. was something about it that you felt was wrong. Correct. That's okay. right. All right. And um, I cried out to this person. because uh -huh. I, Since we got real close, I uh -huh. felt I could trust him. But when I cried out to him, he uh, took advantage of that. And then he... Also you know, started molesting you. Yes. Him. Any feelings for him? Because at 15, you know... You know, there was you, an emotional attachment. An emotional attachment, yeah, okay. Not a yeah. crush? Or, no. All right. No. Mm -mm. All right. So n it wasn't necessarily um, a relationship. It was still an abusive situation. Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what's interesting is then you ended up moving back with your mother. Yes. And then this cycle even seems to deepen. The story yes. keeps going you know, down, 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 right? So tell me what happened then when you moved back to your mother's house. Yeah. Um, and did your brothers come with you or was it just you? It was just me. Just uh, They you. stayed with, the, with my father. Uh -huh. And uh, I go back there and come to find out my mom had a sexual addiction, and okay. um, she had porn. She had porn in, in the house, uh -huh. and I found it, and I would start looking at it. All right. So, when, uh, Lance, I want to really uh, point this out because we we had missed this. When you were a little boy, your dad said something again that was totally emasculating to you, and, and he said it to your mother. What was that comment that he made? Yes, it was really a shock to me because my mom told me about it. Um, she said that I was standing next to her and he said, um, well, you got the daughter you always wanted. Okay, all right. So again, you know, setting up more distance, you know, more of a mm -hmm. wall between mm -hmm. masculinity and yourself. Right. Um, so while you're at your mom's, you know, you end up finishing school. Uh, what's amazing is your mom just up and goes to Alaska because they're paying uh, people to move to Alaska, and now you're left, you know, uh, home alone, right? Yeah. So you started working at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And and this is, I think, just incredible how God is able to, you know, reach down no matter how far we've gone. A and tell me what happened. Well, my mom goes to Alaska, and uh -huh. so obviously I have to go live with my father. Okay. Oh, but okay. I did not want to live with my father. We just right. could not get along. And so I ended up living with my cousin. Your cousin. And so I got a job at McDonald's. I started mm -hmm. working at McDonald's. Yeah. And here I am, just very depressed, and started this, like I said, started this masturbation cycle and, right. and this homosexual desires was very much a loner, uh -huh. very, very depressed and down, and just just felt hopeless. Right. Okay. And what were your feelings about yourself? How did you view yourself? S just no self-worth at all. Okay. None whatsoever. Right. Just. So I, wanna, I want you to tell uh, the audience about this man that you worked with at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was someone I trained on fries at McDonald's, uh -huh. and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, all of a sudden he became a Christian. Uh -huh. And um, I was surprised at that. And he just glowed with just peace and happiness. And Talk I just, to me about and that. And I just looked at him and I was like, I, I was so shocked at the way he was acting. He would uh -huh. smile all the time and everything. Uh -huh. And so I looked at him and I said, I envy you. Uh -huh. I really, really envy you. And he said, and, well, you can be just like me. Uh -huh. you know, just you know, follow me, you know, just start you know, hanging out with me and stuff. And I started doing that. Uh -huh. So what I find incredible is just how the Holy Spirit can reach anybody. Mm -hmm. And what you saw was something that you desired, something that you saw worthy in somebody. And I believe that that was the innate thing that we're all given because, you know, God says that before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, right? Amen. So Amen. this was, I believe, an affirmation. You were finally recognizing something in him that, that was pulling you. All right, and so what happened then as, as you got to know this, uh, this man that you trained? Well, he, he, uh, he invited me to church, uh -huh. but I didn't really have any clothes or anything, so I uh -huh. felt kind of self-conscious about going to church without the right clothes, okay. so I didn't go. All right. But he invited me to a Bible study, and uh -huh. that's when I just fell in love. With I fell in love. I fell in love with the church. I fell in love okay. with, with its teachings uh -huh. and um, that found out that the church was right around the block from where I lived. I didn't even realize that the church that he was going uh -huh. to. So yeah. is that when you began a relationship with Jesus Christ? Yes, that's, okay. yes, All right. yes. Mm -hmm. So not being raised as a Christian, what is your understanding um, um, about uh, biblical, you know, uh, the word of God about homosexuality and masturbation? Um, 
I, I don't know, just if for some reason deep inside, like we were saying before, I just, mm -hmm. I just, there was something wrong about it. Uh -huh. And then as I started studying the Bible, I, I realized that for sure, the Bible substantiated my convictions that okay. it was totally wrong. Wow, okay. Yeah. So now, uh, next what happens? You're, you're a vegan chef and uh, an incredible cook. And uh, um, so the next thing that happens is now you're, you're steeped in the church, you're, you're searching for God, and, and how's it going with the uh, homosexual feelings and the masturbation? Well, for a while, it, you know, everything was abated, you know, mm -hmm. and I was just enjoying this life in Christ. Amen. But then all these things start coming, flooding right back in. I okay. think one of the reasons why, Mike, is because, and I think some people can relate to this, mm -hmm. a lot of times we study a lot about, I came in because I was so excited about Daniel and Revelation uh -huh. specifically, uh -huh. but we don't, we don't um, really delve into the love of Christ. And I mm. think we should do that first right. and really have a established relationship with Christ. Right, very good. Mm -hmm. All right, so Lance, I want to jump forward a little bit because <laughs> okay. we have so much more to get in right now. Tell me about your relationship with this woman that you met. Oh, wow, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, she really liked me. Um, uh -huh. I liked her too. Uh -huh. And um, so we started having a relationship as far as... How did you connect? Um, we connect uh, from, I worked, at a, worked as a chef in Seattle, Washington, mm -hmm. and we met there, mm -hmm. and uh, she, she knew a little bit about my background. What do you mean? Uh, as far as my background is as, as struggling with homosexuality. Thank you. Okay, and, okay. And she also came with her own uh, yes, struggles. Yes, I found out later that she was abused by right. her brother, sexually right. abused by her brother. So yeah. what happened to this relationship? Well, we ended up getting married. Were you in love? <laughs> I was not in love, uh -huh. and I think it was a, a big mistake for marrying someone who I wasn't in love with. Uh -huh. uh, um, a lot of people would ask me, why in the world did you marry this person? You know, uh -huh. And I think one of the reasons was I was trying to please my mom, uh -huh. and also I, I felt pressured into the relationship. Uh, I was trying to get out of a relationship, but then her friends would talk me back into the relationship. Wow. Yeah. So again, I, I believe that even because your self-esteem was so low, had no value, yes. I, I can mm -hmm. see where, mm -hmm. you know, like, well, you know, okay, I'm not doing anything mm -hmm. else, and, and, and there was a mutual thing. You both were afraid of, of the sexual relationship, and so she came from brokenness, you came from brokenness. I can see where it might appear that, hey, this is a good combination. Yes. But what happened once you got married? Feelings changed. Oh, yeah, I mean, immediately after I got married, I knew I made a, a bad mistake. But for her, uh, for her, I mean, she uh, she was denying what was really going on, and uh, she was really trying to hold the marriage together, but I was wanting out. I felt like a caged animal. Right, because she now had fallen in love with you, and yeah. now she wanted the full expression of what yes, the marriage that's, was. that's exactly and right. And so for you, mm -hmm. that created a lot of pressure. Yes. A and what was that like? How did it manifest, this pressure? What were you feeling at the time? Well, the pressure would manifest itself in just yelling and screaming at her mm. and just being alone. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my obsession with pornography deepened. Okay. And you had a, a homosexual relationship yes. during the marriage as yes. well, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happened then? That's about when we met, isn't <sighs> that, it? Now we're exactly, about to 2005. Exactly. 2005. Yeah. I, I, um, you know, and I, I have to say this, Mike, that it was an on and off thing with, with the Lord. You know, mm -hmm. it seemed like I would have this victory for a while. Yeah. Because deep down inside, I didn't want to be this way, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to have these struggles with pornography or masturbation. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would go through these periods where I was free. Yeah. And so uh, I ended up going to Southern Adventist University uh -huh. to uh, take theology. Right. And while I was there, I met a woman uh, who I was talking to about my uh, attractions. Is that Nicole? Attraction, Nicole okay. Parker, yeah. yeah. And uh, she uh, introduced me to you. Okay, all right. <laughs> and so, you know, we're gonna, we still got, you know, quite a bit to get into a short amount of time. What was your reaction to me? Well, I was, I was really trying to uh -huh. uh, get you to understand um, that I really wanted to experience the gay lifestyle. I never yeah. have really experienced it. I mean, I had my, little flings and stuff, but I never really experienced it like you mm -hmm. did, you know, as you explained your life to me. And I, uh, you know, I, I, I wanted you to understand that, and uh, you just was trying to get me back to, you know, you know, Lance, it's great that you had never experienced these things. You know, you don't want to experience these things, but uh -huh. I, wouldn't, I wasn't listening to you. Uh -huh. I, wasn't, okay. I didn't want to hear it. All right, and so then what happened? Well, I just dropped you like a hot potato. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 it was pretty much that way. Uh, and so you changed your phone number, you changed your email address, you told me to lose your number, and, and then what happened? Well, at this time, you know, what happened was, was that I, I, um, 
I wanted out of the relationship. I wanted out of the marriage. You wanted out of the relationship, and what did you want into, Lance? I wanted to experience the gay lifestyle. And did you? I experienced it, and I was greatly disappointed. What happened? <laughs> what happened was I went to a gay bar, uh -huh. and I, uh, I saw someone I was really attracted to. We, we had a conversation, and I was totally uh, rejected by this person mm. because I wasn't the type of person that they wanted. Uh -huh. And it hurt me so bad that I said, I will not go back again. You know, it's interesting because, uh, you know, the me many people that I've talked to, Wayne and Ron and, and you and me as well, you know, the gay life, you know, it calls to us. It says, come and we'll love you and, and we'll take care of you. But all of us recognize that when we went into that lifestyle, yes, they definitely identified with many things. But what happened is we also found that there was a lot of criticism, judgment, uh, uh, again, not fitting in. So right. we've all had experiences mm -hmm. like that. My fear, when you cut me off was that I, I had even warned you I said you know Lance once you get a taste of this you may never come back and, and and still so when you left I continued to keep you on my prayer list and I thought that I had done something so heinous that to you know to let you get away but you know what's incredible is um, we're not done with this story yet are we mm -mm. and so Lance pick it up then from your great disappointment and how God then started to talk to you yeah I have a friend named, named Jeff Tatarchuk oh yeah <laughs> yes talk about Jeff yeah after this disappointment of being in a gay bar and being rejected uh -huh. I just went deep into isolation mm -hmm. just watching junk on TV and deeper into the porn mm -hmm. and just really depressed and discouraged but this friend named Jeff Tatarchuk that I met at school, uh -huh. he never gave up on me. He would That's come right. over and just fellowship with me, never condemn me. Uh -huh. But one day he invited me to a uh, revival mm -hmm. meeting and I went there and the, the love of God just touched my heart mm. and I rededicate my life back mm. to the Lord and got rebaptized. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That, I mean, that's incredible, right? I, you know, it's amazing mm -hmm. because I heard um, Ellen White say one time, she said that the same power that it takes to raise someone from the dead is the same power that it takes to save a soul. And so, Lance, not only were you saved once, you know, you brought back to life once, you were brought back to life again the second time. So what does that do for your self-worth now, recognizing the extent of how God would go for you personally? Well, I, I think you might know this, and I think I uh, touched on this earlier, that I kept falling, and I kept going back to the Lord, yes. and I'd be okay for a while, and i fall again. Uh -huh. But what has really touched my heart and what has really caused stability in my relationship with Christ is that He uh, never gave up on me. No. He never gave up on me. Right. And it has really right. touched my heart. And I finally am able to trust Him because in the past I didn't trust Him. Right. Well, doesn't that make sense? Mm -hmm. You didn't know how to trust men. Mm -hmm. You didn't even know how to trust mm -hmm. any of your family members. You were mm -hmm. all in this alone. Correct. So how was it that God was able to, to cut past all of that and actually get into your heart? Well, you know, Mike, you said something um, uh, uh, to me that really caused a lot of stability um, in my relationship with Christ and that was that God really loves you Lance and you still have a, a testimony to tell mm -hmm. to people because I thought you know what can I tell people I, I, I got a divorce you know I've been in this porn I've been I, I just been so degraded mm -hmm. but you, you said something to me that really caused me to see how much God loved me and I can be used by him. Wow. That's powerful. Lance, I, you know, my insights to your situation are because we share a lot of mm -hmm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. I came into, you know, uh, church culture again, still struggling with pornography and masturbation addiction. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the, you know, the rates are so high now with, you know, iPads and computers and, and, and things that you can hold in your hand that access the Internet. You know, it just seems to not only be sliming secular society, but also in church culture, you know, 45% uh, of Christian pastors struggle with pornography addiction so we know that this is a very powerful grip that the enemy has on us yes. and the only way the only one who can break through all of that is the one that God sent to die on the cross for us to take our sins on him and to also bring us uh, redemption and restoration isn't that right that's exactly right and I, I tell you Mike um, what has really helped me a whole lot see in the past I would because I didn't trust God I didn't mm -hmm. trust his word that's right but now I'm trusting His Word, and, and His Word now is making a big difference in my life as I'm moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, me be, being here right now is because I've trusted in His Word. Yeah. I, I say, I'm going to do this, Lord, because you're going to be with me. 
Wow, that's powerful. You know, Lance, uh, <clears throat> this is exciting for me because, you know, for all the time that we've known each other since 2005, mm -hmm. I never actually saw you face to face until October <laughs> yeah, uh, of right. 2012. <laughs> you know, that was the first time that we actually right. saw each other right. face to face, and this is the second time. So uh, I'm just amazed at how God writes our stories and at a time when I thought you know you were lost and gone into that world and I thought it was just a, a another check mark you know for Satan what happened is you know God let the rope out a little bit and what he said is you know uh, I've still got a hold of Lance it's not over for him a and through Jeff uh, say his name again to yeah. yeah yeah he was the faithful warrior that kept coming and showing you unconditional love and I believe that he needed to affirm that to you through a male to let you know what healthy male love was Amen. that wasn't sexualized. Amen. You know, no matter what the enemy tries to do to us, no matter how he comes to attack us, no matter what age that was. And for you, um, like Wayne, you know, it, it happened even in vitro, the rejection that you were feeling. You know, uh, they talk about the influences of a pregnant mother, how that's passed on to the children. And, and here this little lost child, even before he was born, nobody knew about him. And, and here he was tucked away and he was experiencing the depression of his mother and, and, and the uh, nutritional deprivation. Mm -hmm. And then even your beginning started off rough. But the enemy was not triumphant. Isn't that right? No, not at all. That's not right. All. That's Praise right. The Lord. Do you have any uh, kind of closing comment that you would give to somebody who may be in a marriage, who's living a lie, um, or somebody who's struggling with pornography addiction uh, that wants out and doesn't absolutely see anything that could help him out? Do you have any uh, comment that you could share some wisdom to? Well, I, I would just say stop living a lie. Stop believing a lie of the enemy. Uh -huh. it, that's what has helped me just really get into God's Word and really believe what He says. When He says He loves you, He really does love you and He wants to help you. When God says He loves you, He really does love you. So that was, that was for you profound? Oh man, I mean for someone who was hungry and thirsting for love, yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay, all right, this is incredible. So, um, so where are you at now? How, what are you uh, doing to, um, to begin your day? Oh man, I, I begin my day with, uh, with studying God's Word mm -hmm. and prayer and I also do it in the evening mm -hmm. and that's what's really strengthening me. But I, I want to uh, just quote a song that a friend of mine wrote Yes. that is just so beautiful because it really touches my heart and, it, it's, it just, and I hope it touches your heart. It says, uh, it's called So Many Days and it's, it says, uh, can you still do miracles, you as in God? Can you still do miracles? Can you change a heart that's cold? Can you clear all my confusion and make me whole? Can you shower me with all the blessings you promised to endow? I know you can, because you're doing it right now. Amen. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> excellent. Lance, thank you. This has been an incredible opportunity, and we hope that you've gleaned some real truths uh, on this program of Pure Choices, and we welcome you to come back again soon. 